Hello, welcome to Yarn Story. I'm Carmen. And I'm Kaylee. And this is our podcast. <laughs> it's been a while since I was on. Yes. Uh, because you had Amanda on last time. Yes. Which uh, has been a well-reviewed episode. Yeah, I mean, every time Amanda's on anything, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, you, you can listen for hours. Yeah. I even got like a text from my mom and she was like, Amanda's great, you should do more with her. <laughs> Ditch Kaylee. <laughs> I don't think she meant that, but um, no, like, I'm sure. Yes, not. yes. Uh, we'll but definitely... no, she's just got so many fascinating stories, and I feel like every time I'm with her, I learn something new. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, I think that's why she's so fun at the retreats too, because yeah. she's a great storyteller, and definitely. Um, she has so many. She's got a good uh, sense of humor too. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm happy to have you back. Yay! I did miss you. <laughs> good. Uh, do you want to tell us what you've been up to? Or should we open? Uh, yeah, well, well, what do we, uh, what do we do? <laughs> it's been a while. I know. Um, <laughs> Your head's just been elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing my PhD for the last month, um, mm -hmm. which is why I missed the last one, because I had a deadline that needed to meet, and, oh, it was just not going as planned. And so this period hasn't gone as planned, but it's been good still, and it's Excellent. been very productive in ways that I didn't think... I needed to be productive mm. um, but I feel so much better about where I'm at with it and I'm a lot closer than I was at the beginning so I mean finishing, that, so yeah. that is the important part yeah so definitely. yeah yeah so I feel um, good about it well we've missed seeing you around but also I'm glad you've been hibernating and yeah getting your writing done definitely because um, I know it's not easy yep yep I've been spending uh, I've been full PhD mode too where all of a sudden I'm not waking up at 7 a.m. to go to work mm. at 9. I'm waking up at, I don't know, 9 and then working till, working at like 10 to noontime and then taking a nap and then working from 3 to like 8 o'clock and then taking a nap <laughs> and then working from 10 to like 3 a.m. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very productive writer when, when it's just me, I feel like, mm -hmm. and I think when it's um, in the daytime, it feels like there are so many other yeah. distractions, mm -hmm. like my phone going off or my phone potentially going off or um, somebody trying to get a hold of me to do some sort of training or right. <laughs> like yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, um, that it's really distracting, even if you're not being distracted in that moment. Mm -hmm. It's just like the potentiality of being distracted. Oh, definitely, I get that. So I find mm -hmm. basically writing really late at night. That's when I do my best writing. Um, between the hours of 11 and 3. <laughs> True philosopher way. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, yeah, I would be getting up at 3 to start writing. Yeah, like, yeah. I would be the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. But I thankfully don't have to do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you do get up early to write, though. I do, mm -hmm. but not. On newsletter day? On newsletter day, which mm -hmm. is nothing like a PhD, so let's not pretend it is. But it's still, it's still beautiful writing. <laughs> <laughs> it's better writing, actually, than my PhD. Oh, PhD is a lot drier. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's different. <laughs> yeah. your, your, uh, your target is... 80,000 yeah. words on the top of the Your purpose is very different yeah. from the <laughs> shop newsletter. Definitely. So. <laughs> 80,000 words on the topic of yarn. <laughs> Do I don't even know how many words my newsletter normally is. I don't yeah. count them or anything. Yeah. So, um, well, we're happy to have you. We are mm -hmm. actually, so this is episode 13 of season two. Ooh, 13. Oh my God. You know what that means? It's Taylor Swift. It's Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow there's going to be some sort of conspiracy about last episode 13, Ooh. 1, 3, Taylor Swift, you know, Travis Kelsey. I mean, something. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm excited to hear it. <laughs> Put your conspiracy theories in the comments. Yeah, yeah, put them in there. And how this is related to Taylor Swift. Yes. Uh, oh my god, I hope we get some good ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what uh, day is it coming out? Like the 5th, I think. Okay, so... Mm. Uh, but it, we are making this our season 2 finale, mm -hmm. episode 13. Yeah. Um, we probably should have planned things better and just like taken the break while you were doing your PhD, <laughs> yeah, but uh, planning hasn't really been our strong suit. <laughs> we just kind of went with it <laughs> when we've been doing the podcast. So that's actually what we're going to be doing in our break this yeah. time is um, we're going to get together with max volume. <laughs> we're going to get better audio for you guys for sure for yep. season three. Um, Kaylee's going to try to get better at describing things uh, non-visually. <laughs> yes, also Carmen is. No, um, you're good at it. I'm not. I always forget. <laughs> well, I'm, it's very like... I, I yeah, can't think yeah, about yeah. it. I don't think it doesn't really come naturally because we can like see ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. The camera. Yeah. So, yeah. 
so yeah, we we want to improve some things. So we're gonna take a little break in order to do that. Yep. Um, so we're celebrating today with this bottle of champagne, <laughs> which I picked up at Waitrose earlier. And you said I think this is the same champagne we drank at the end the of episode last one. Yeah. Is this, um, so this is episode 13, season two. Yes. I feel like it's like season three or four or five. I feel like we've been doing it for ages. We have not even been doing it a year. Yeah, that's crazy. Or like maybe just no, a year. No, because I think we started in April, right? Yeah, so not yeah, even a like, year. Not even a year. I think, yeah, it was April. Yeah. I have to look back. I, feel like I did not time prepare that long. information for today. Yeah. Um, I should keep our cork today. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't do what I did at the Christmas cork. <laughs> 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 destroy it yeah um yeah that happens sometimes though i always feel like in retrospect i'm like oh i should have saved that cork and then i yeah, yeah. never remember it for the next time i have uh i have a couple you have corks. a good yeah have a good collection i've yeah. got yeah well not like i've got like three yeah i've got one from the day i finished my mba nice um and i had to i actually drink well champagne by myself <laughs> well because uh, that is how that went <laughs> so i <laughs> Have Were you my in Ireland then? then? No, I was in Germany. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I think the final submission was like late. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the circumstances, but I was definitely by myself uh, drinking some champagne. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, we brought back the good season two glasses. Oh yeah, because we broke one early in the season, and I bought a new one today. <laughs> so. They're back. They're back. We'll get a new glass for season three. Yeah. Let's add to our collection. I actually saw some at Always Sunday in Bath the other day. Oh, yeah? So there were some sexy margarita glasses there. Okay, also, um, Grandma Green has 15% off right Ooh, now. Do they? I know this Darn. because I bought Damn the one it. glass today. Is it off of everything? Maybe? Oh, no. I, I just bought something there. No, I just bought those something from there last week. Oh, so that's annoying. That's anyway. <laughs> well, cheers yes. to season three. Cheers to season two. Well, the end of season two. Two to season three. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I mean, we already know. That's we like really this one. bubbly. Yeah. I kind of inhale in. You know, yeah, like, me too. I thought I was gonna have my glass. An issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Not a champagne glass, but you know, drink out of whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I do like these glasses. Yeah, I do too. Okay. Somebody's gonna tell us though. So why we shouldn't drink <laughs> champagne out of Actually, well, I think these might be better than the the flutes. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you're supposed to drink them out of a coupe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I almost bought us today <coughs> because they had some. The, the, they're, yeah, they go with really these. cute ones, yeah. Um, but then I was like, no, no, no. We buy new glasses for the beginning of the season, not, not the, the end. end. Mm -hmm. So I just replaced the one with Nice. Yeah. So thank you so much for being with us through season two yep and, and season one and if season you one if you watch season one <laughs> uh and go back and watch them listen to them while we're on a break i guess yeah it sounds like there's a lot of content there. yeah there um i feel like i'm gonna actually go back and, and watch them um which actually am i gonna do that because i hate listening to my voice mm. but it's good practice though I actually could... no I, I was gonna say i could put subtitles on and read it but i don't want to do that <laughs> you don't want to do that yeah um i mean i watched us at least twice every episode because yeah, yeah, yeah. I do the editing. <laughs> oh, guess what I found out of the weekend? Beverly has a an IMDb credit for editing a feature film. I was like, why is she not editing these? Why the hell am I still editing this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the podcast? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> She's probably looking at us like amateurs. Yeah. <laughs> so we might get more professional in the video editing as well. <laughs> Love that. Ooh, could she do some effects? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> like, I want one of the few, one of the things I love about Max and Vincent's podcast is mm. Max, like, they assume it's Max, but maybe it's Vincent. I have no idea. <laughs> they can tell me <laughs> <laughs> later. But um, when he does the reels, he is uh, uh, introducing a new um, oh. episode. Yeah. Uh, the, the, he does this it, cool like, effect switches. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, slideshows things. And it's very sexy looking. <laughs> it is sexy looking. Yeah. Um, I also look at that guy, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> 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 it was so funny the other day I was actually talking to Sam's sister who mm -hmm. is 22 years old mm -hmm. and I was telling her about how I still think that I can put Photoshop experience on my resume when the last Photoshop class I took when, it's, when I was 17 years old <laughs> in high school on like those gigantic computers 
and I'm pretty sure it was like Photoshop 2000 or something. Yeah, I think probably you take yeah. that off your CV. Yeah. Cause you'll go to a job and someone will be severely disappointed. I know how to use a magic lasso. I don't even know what that and, is. And also, yeah, I made a really successful picture of me and Jude Law photoshopped together. <laughs> I will send that to you and you can add please, it in here. Please do. I can add a photo that, um, yeah. uh, I will say I have every faith that you would figure it out yes. very quickly. I'm good at figuring things out. It just might take me a while. Yeah. Well, <laughs> meh. Um, that Photoshop is like one of those things I have like put in my, I want to learn that this year. Yeah. Yeah. Several times since I've started the business yeah. and, but you've always had people, well, well, well not always, but you've had people recently who I are very good. I basically decided that paying someone else to do a thing yeah. very quickly. And now there's Canva. Yeah, yeah. So there's stuff that I kind of need to do. Yeah. I mean, I like when I put make the graphic for this for the newsletter, mm -hmm. I'm like, do I love this? No. Could someone else do it better? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> is this what I'm doing at six o'clock in the morning? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is a button that gets clicked. Like it is yeah, an image. Yeah, yeah. It says what it does. It does the job. And you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can get more advanced as we as we go. We as can. you learn more new skills. Yes. Well, we have a new cover. Do we? Yeah. On um, on like for the audio podcast. Oh yes, I love that. I know, yes, actually. I know. Uh, I remember seeing that a few weeks, well, probably months ago now. Yeah. Um, I think it's so good. Yeah, it looks, it looks really, really good. good. So yes, there's a new. If you don't listen to us on Spotify or um, Apple Podcasts, mm -hmm. then you probably haven't seen it. But we're. I think we will integrate that into the yeah, video as that well. That is really good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That there's like maybe like an opening slide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Anyways, that's what's going on with the podcast, but we'll tell you about yarny things. Definitely. As well. So what should we start with? Should we start with what we're wearing, what we're knitting, what we're going to knit, what we um, want to knit? <laughs> well, I mean, those are all good topics. Yeah. You can tell that I've been writing a PhD because basically- You'd like it in sections? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want it in sections. <laughs> I want to know the plan before I start doing it, mm. but we'll also like- discover what we want to do yeah. as we do it. Right? I mean, you did miss out talking about Unravel. Yes, I did. At all. I haven't talked to you about Unravel at all. I know. I haven't heard a single thing because did we even talk about it on Monday at the Cal? Mm, uh, very briefly, I like before you came on. I was like two minutes um, late. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people had been there, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. there wasn't they much <laughs> I was supposed to go, but I had a migraine that day. Mm. I was up the night before um, writing. No, I was up the night, the Thursday before writing mm. till like three. Mm -hmm. And then the evening, I talked to my mom actually till like 1 a.m. So blame her. Mm. But then I woke up at five. I had a really bad migraine, so I couldn't go. It's all your fault, Jen. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I kept you from buying yarn. Yeah, I know. That's what I said to her. I was like, you know, probably saved myself like 100 to 200 quid by not going, and I don't really have that money, so, you know. <laughs> it's all fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. But it would have been nice to see you all, and especially see Max and Vincent, because I don't think I'll get to see them. Oh, um, no. Right here. I don't think you will, because yeah, they... Yeah. They're going to the retreat, right? They're going to the retreat. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for those of you who don't know, we were at Unravel mm -hmm. last weekend, which is a yarn festival here in the UK, in Farnham. Yep. And we were sharing a booth with Max and Vincent. Mm -hmm. I of have Lake Arsons. of Lake Arsons. I have stolen Max's sweater. Mm. Like literally. Oh, is this his? Th I this, thought this, this was. Is... Oh, <laughs> that's what makes sense now. Because she before we got on this, she's like, "I've stolen this to talk about," and I'm like, "Cool. I thought it was yours." <laughs> <laughs> like, where did you steal it no, from? Walcott. <laughs> the business from my you own, own company. <laughs> <laughs> Like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, no, I actually stole this from Vincent or from Max. I was like, he's not. He doesn't need this. Yeah. I'm just gonna borrow it. <laughs> um, I will give it back next week. The thing is, back. though, is it's hard to give back fluff. It really is. <laughs> so this is Max's officer sweater, which was his design that he released right before Christmas. It's in um, our fluff yarn. And uh, I think it fits me perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it does. I feel like every time Max makes a sample for him, it fits you perfectly. It really does, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we actually had a whole conversation about that. <laughs> I was like, oh, I always wanted brothers that I could share clothing really with. It fits really well on yeah. the collar, too. Yes, it does. It fits me very well on the shoulders. Yep. We seem to have the same shoulder width. Mm. Um, we're obviously like a bit different across the chest. 
Oh, I got, really? I got some boobs. <laughs> <laughs> but we seem to have like the exact same shoulder width because <laughs> this does fit me very well. But that goes and back to our like, episode one, or no, season one, season one episode, like I think it was like seven or eight or something. Was that another season finale? No, we yeah. had one after that, I think. Okay, yeah. So it was like eight or nine. Maybe it was a season. <laughs> I don't know. There's but an anyway, episode. It's where good. we talk about measurements and we actually measure each other mm -hmm. and then like show you guys on camera um, how we measure each other. And yeah. one of the things that we always talk about, which you, you all know, know this by now, um, is you should always take your upper bust measurement because yeah. that'll, be that'll be more accurate for getting your shoulder measurement. Yeah. Um, some people, though, um, just depends on your own body, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And the more you know your own body, the better. Yeah. For your and size. Knowing your measurements, you'll yeah. get a much better fitting sweater. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just happen to fit perfectly into Max's sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you need a sweater, you should send it to Max and be like, which one would you do for yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking, there was a lot of like sweater stealing this weekend. Mm. Actually, mm. Um, we had the most amazing room. Um, I'm not entirely sure we ended up like that, but so we were sharing a booth with like our songs, so we were together. Uh, and then New from Hide and Hammer was in the room. Oh, okay, great. And then Anton from Raw Wool Company, oh, wow. who oh is my like God. also a friend of ours. <laughs> yes, and then uh, Bird Street Yarn was also oh, there. Oh my God, yeah, nice. um, yeah. And Hot Butter Yarns, who we were next to last year as well. Oh, okay, great. So um, there weren't a ton of vendors in our room, which was quite oh, nice. So it was quite intimate. Yes, yeah, so it was quite intimate. Um, and <laughs> the Saturday morning, so the three-day festival, so mm -hmm. I think it was the second morning, Saturday morning, um, I was looking at the Raw Wool Company stuff. Mm -hmm. like, so if you don't know the Raw Wool Company, gorgeous. he does beautiful um, fibers from his farm. Like, none of it is dyed. It's all absolutely stunning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was looking at the samples. And there was one hanging there, and I was like, that looks like it fit me. Was it the Gansey? That looks like, I don't know if it was technically a Gansey. Okay. It's from one of his, it's from his new collection of okay. patterns. I don't know what it was called, but I was like, that looks, I was like, I'm just going to try that on. <laughs> I tried it on, it fit me, like, absolutely perfect. Again, oh my like, God. the sleeves were, like, really long, and <laughs> Anton is quite a bit shorter than me, shorter than me, and I was like, who's? What, why does this fit me? And he's like, oh, it's because I knitted it for someone else. And I was like, does that person want it? Because um, I think I do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, and so then, fast forward to Sunday, and uh, New from High Hammer runs over, like, we're sort of, it's the end of the day, we're getting ready to pack mm. up, and she's, like, taking the sweater and the hanger from it. <laughs> so she's, she goes over, she's like, stash it, stash it, <laughs> I can't actually steal it. But then what we all oh did is we all went and stole sweaters, yeah, samples, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a photo of that on, I think, our Instagram and his, um, and because he wasn't in the room, and we waited for him to come back uh, to find us all in his samples. Oh. It was quite funny, um, and we're having a dance party. Oh, so. that sounds so much fun! I you're giving me big FOMO now. Yeah, well, it was really good fun, and we got to see so many like lovely customers yeah. and lots of fans of the podcast. Oh, that's good. Um, so you know, it was just me saying thank you on our behalf, <laughs> and people were like, "Where's Kaylee?" I'm like, "Right in a PhD, <laughs> in bed, in bed." <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you to everybody who came out and people brought snacks. Yeah. Well, maybe next time um, I'll be there. Maybe. 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 Who knows? I don't know. Beth really had like the time of her life. Yeah. And I don't think she ever wants to let anyone else go. Oh, it doesn't matter festival. if Beverly wants to let me go. <laughs> I'll just be there. It doesn't even matter if you invite me. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll just show up. I also, I did promise Beverly she could come on the podcast in season three. Oh, okay, good. So we'll have another oh, special Oh, that's guest. really good. Yeah. I yeah. wanted her to, but I wasn't sure if she wanted to. No, so. no, she was yeah, very excited, good. so we'll Yay. have her on for sure, yeah. Okay. Mm. So, um, did we say it was the Officer Sweater by Max? By Max, yeah. In Fluff. In Fluff. This is Shadow and Officer. Mm-hmm. With the colors. And you have this cast on, don't you? I do have this cast on. <laughs> in my <what> colors. <laughs> I have a cast on in Cinema and English Rose, mm. which is like the red and the light pink. Yeah. Um, but I have done exactly like half of the ribbing. <laughs> oh, really? Because <laughs> it's from the bottom. <laughs> I started at Christmas and like, just, I don't know. Yeah, you didn't have good mojo last year though. I really you? didn't. Mm -hmm. So um, that happened. That's why I just think the sweater should stay with me. Yeah, there you go. 
He's Sorry, Max. Him. He can do himself another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and his friend Tanya actually said that on Instagram. She really? was like, Max, I think you should knit yourself another one. Leave that one with Carmen. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Perfect. I know. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to and what I'm wearing. So what are you wearing? So I'm wearing one of the new Walcott patterns mm -hmm. and it is called, oh my God, you just told me right before. It always pops out of my head. Uh, Dark Matter yep. by Cheryl Faust. Yes. Faust. Yeah. yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if she pronounced it Faust or Faust. I mean, I would pronounce it Faust because it's German. Okay. Maybe that's why in my head I'm thinking Faust. Yeah. Cool. Um, and she's been knitting these amazing mosaic mm. um, knit patterns for a while now. Mm. Um, she did a worsted weight version, not of the same exact pattern, no. but of another kind of mosaic knit, very like architectural and aztec -y kind of look yes. to it. Um, and that was called the same but different. Mm -hmm. um, but Which you've seen me wear. Yes. We have a sample of that and that's now. a cowl version. Yeah. Um, so this is actually a shawl knit in our opus rather yes. than origin so this is a sport weight yeah she actually designed it in opus mm -hmm. um, which is very exciting and uh, we used hickory which is the brown opus uh, with um, dirty little secret in mm, the spin cycle I love that yeah um, it's gorgeous mm-hmm I love how it turned out it's like very dark and moody yeah um, I mean it's very Kaylee it is very Kaylee it's actually kind of like that that, is this the scheme that you said? Like yeah, this like, is the Kaylee, Kaylee, Carmen, and Carmen yeah, yeah, in the scheme. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't they named it that? I don't know because they. <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't everything center around us? I, I have know, no come idea. On. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have kits for that and for this sweater on the website. Yep. Um, and we we are out of the dirty little secrets colorway, but I do have it on order. <coughs> so. Well, I think it went out when you put it on basically on Instagram. Yeah. And it was one of those things where, like, as soon as you showed it, I was like, oh, maybe I do something in that. And then when I came in, it was all gone. Sad. Sad times for Kaylee. Yeah, very sad. But that's all right. I have enough spin cycle. I'll keep buying more spin cycle in the future. More spin cycle will keep coming in. It will. It absolutely will. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, so what's on your needles then? I have the pressed flowers on my needles, a cardigan. Oh, wow. What a surprise. Oh my god, because we're doing a count. <laughs> yeah. uh, I did forget to bring it in because I came into the shop earlier today, didn't think I'd be here very long, mm. I would go home and get it, but I was here all day, so <laughs> I don't have it with me yeah. to show. That happens. Yes. And I also, so my leapling I haven't finished off yet. Oh, because oh, you were trying to decide what to do, right? Yeah, but I did decide. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't picked it up. So yeah. I'm going to finish that this weekend. And I'm Perfect. going to, because I literally have like, I don't know, 10 yeah, yeah, hours yeah. of sleeve, short oh, sleeve yeah, to do. Yeah. So I'm going to do that so I can wear it to the retreat next That'll week. That'll be awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. I think it fits you really well. And mm -hmm. despite going down the needle size, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, those are the two things. Perfect. On my needles. So I've got um, my pressed flowers cowl, which and you have it with you. I have here, um, and I've just split for the front. You are so much further than me. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're writing a PhD? <laughs> I'm only doing this. I haven't knit in ages. Um, that's not true. Actually, I did knit for like half an hour at lunch today, but. Um, I love how those colors are coming out. So there you go. So very greeny. So I'm doing Isigur Tweed with, um, in, what's it called? It's like North Sea. North Sea, yeah. Um, and the spin cycle I'm using is Light Years um, in Dyed in the Wool. And I'm really, I'm obsessed with it. I think it's, I love Light I Years. I love it. It's such a good yeah. color. Um, I was actually thinking of going with the dark green in Isigur Tweed, um, mm. but I thought it would be better with the kind of greeny blue instead. I think it is. Yeah. I also, I, cause things can be more, it's going to be very wearable. Yeah. The light years goes from like limey yeah. sea foam green all the way into like a bluey purpley. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's quite pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do, I really do love it. Um, I mean, that's even kind of mustardy up there, kind of olivey almost. Yeah. It's funny though, so if you're not doing the cow with us, one of the things that Carmen was talking about on Monday was that she noticed, or somebody noticed at Unravel, 
that you had a flower misplaced. Right? I can't believe you're telling people. <laughs> well, I'm only telling them because basically I did, so last night I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to bed at a normal time so I can get up early and work. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm signing off of my computer at like 10. <laughs> normal. Totally normal. Yeah. And I'm gonna do an hour of knitting. Yeah. Um as a like well done Kaylee. And it also gave me a goal too to be like, okay, I need to get this far in order to yeah. do this and like yeah. blah, blah blah. I'd give myself little rewards all the time. <laughs> I mean you should. Yeah. And so I did an hour of knitting and then as I was going to bed I realized that one of my flowers was misplaced. <laughs> and I held it up to Sam, who is an absolute perfectionist about everything. And I was like, can you I was like, there's a mistake here. Can you figure out what it is? Mm. And he was looking at it for like ages. And he was like, no, I can't, honestly. And I was like, okay, well, this flower is one stitch over from where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And it's really annoying. And he's like, I can't even notice it, Kaylee, though. And I was like, yeah, but I know. I know it's there. And I was like, but I don't know whether or not to rip it out. <laughs> I mean, I am definitely not ripping it out. <laughs> and um, you will never know which flower yeah, so exactly. I ripped it out and now I'm starting it again. <laughs> and I had just finished all of the increases for the uh, front panel. <laughs> so, so I had to rip back to the beginning this is why of the increases. Someone recently like or accused decreases. me of being a perfectionist. I was like, absolutely fucking not. Like, <laughs> yeah. I am definitely not. You, however, yeah, definitely are. Yeah, so... Yeah, so that's what I did. I had to rip back last, or this morning I did that. And then I did <laughs> like two rows to redo the flower. Um, and it's in the right place now, so whatever, I'm happy. But it took me a while to figure out what she meant in her instructions. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, as soon as I did figure it out, like it definitely makes sense. Yeah. But it's one of those patterns and like we see this a lot of the times with like loads of different people like mm. it's not like an, an Amy problem and it's not even really a problem it's like just whatever right mm. we interpret words differently it's we interpret me meanings differently um and for me I have always been the person who is like this is the words that they're telling me but what are the 90 ways that I can interpret this and then what do I think they meant <laughs> I mean, I have a degree in English literature, so that yeah. is like my specialty. Yeah. Is like, what did those three mean, <laughs> words mean? Like, what, what were they thinking? thinking? What let's, message were they Let's conveying? like write an 80,000 thesis, word thesis. <laughs> okay, um, I'm not doing that. Yeah. But I do <laughs> the same with, uh, like, um, classic is um, decrease every eighth round. Oh my god. <laughs> like, sleep. I'm like, it drives me insane. Do you mean the seven, like, do I knit eight and then decrease? Do I knit mm -hmm. seven and decrease? I don't know. Yep. I don't know I either. Don't know. I don't know. And to be honest, I think as long as you're, whatever you do is consistent. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It probably doesn't matter. <laughs> and someone will tell us, well, it's always this way. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if it is always I that way. I don't know if it is either. And I think people mean different things. Like, um, some, I think most pattern designers, well, yarn design, knit de knitwear designers. Knitwear. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, that is not the thing. Come on, Kaylee, get there, get there. Um, anyway, most knitwear designers, I think when they are writing their patterns, they'll be like, okay, the left front is as you wear it, not as yeah. you're looking at it, right? Yeah. But there have been like two or three patterns where I'm like, my God, you are not using that word right, or I have done this horribly wrong, and so is the 90 other people who have tested this. Yeah. And also knitted after you test it. Well, I mean, it should be as you wear it. Right. Right? It should always be as you wear it. <laughs> Let's just be clear on that. <laughs> Carmen and Kaylee have reached a decision on yeah. this. <laughs> so if you've done it a different way, you are wrong. Yeah. We love you still, but you're wrong. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I, it was just one of those things, like, I had to text it to my mom and be like, what the hell is this telling me to do? Mm. Um, because I think it's this, but I think it can also be this. And then she was like, I think it's this. And then one of the other things is that she calls something a plain stitch. Oh, yeah. And it, it is just like, it, like, it makes total sense once you know what it is. And she has it defined on the key. But I didn't read the key. <laughs> so why would you read the key? Right. So it's like this little tiny chart next to the big chart and I'm like just looking at the big chart <laughs> And then I'm like googling what is a plain stitch just knitting you garter should, stitch what you guys should obviously totally listen to us when it comes to knitting advice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> we totally know what we're doing too. We're so, we know everything, don't we? <laughs> I mean, we can read a pattern. I promise. <laughs> but I feel like this is this is why cows are though so good. They are. It's because they basically have like 50 other people to be like, yeah, I thought it was that way. Well, actually, no, I thought it was this way. Yeah. <laughs> And well, you, that's like, why you need your knitting, your knitting buddies in general, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. To be like, oh, it is late and I have had two glasses of wine, but like, can you help me? <laughs> I mean, my go-to is always Amanda. I'm like, Amanda? Amanda, I know. I've texted Amanda things so many times and I am like... She's so patient. <laughs> she is so patient. And also, too, like, Amanda's very good at communicating she really things. <laughs> she, um, there's another, like... She has another knit group that's mm. not related to the shop, and um, she's told me a couple of things that she's helped people with. And I was like, "Oh, was that like at the knit session?" She's like, "Oh no, that was via text." And I was like, "You did what? what? Via text message?" Like, well, she's told me too. Like sometimes she gets customers who call the oh, shop, yeah. mm -hmm. and if you're one of these, great. Like, <laughs> please, <laughs> like, hopefully Amanda's in because yeah. <laughs> I am not skilled like her. Me neither. But they'd be like. Okay, so I'm on uh, row 97 of this pattern, and it's telling me to do this really complicated technique. Mm -hmm. And I've done three three slips and one one yarn over and two knit, twos together, and now it's not coming out right. And then Amanda will be like, "Ah, uh, yes, this is what they did." <laughs> Not, not knowing at all what the pattern is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh well, you probably yeah. a little. Uh, yeah. and be like, oh yeah, that's exactly what they did. Yeah. She's a wizard. <laughs> and then she'll be like, and this is how you fix it. Yes. <laughs> All over. I'm like, how yeah. the heck do you do that? She's magic. I'd be like, look up these five different YouTube videos and watch the first minute of this one and the third minute of that one and the sixth minute of that one and combine them together. <laughs> oh, I'd probably be like, um, I'm gonna have to call you back in four hours <laughs> yeah. after I have like purchased the pattern, downloaded it, like tried to knit that section myself. And then send it to Amanda. <laughs> Like, please, Amanda, can you tell me? How to do this? Can you tell me how, like, what I tell the customer because yeah. I can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, she's a godsend. Uh, again, I promise we know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> we do. We actually do. But um, yeah, I mean, that's part of the fun of it, though. It figuring is. it out. Together. It absolutely is. Mm -hmm. um, and there's always something to learn. Mm. Like, I don't think that, and I mean, Amanda would say the same thing, right? Like, she's always learning. Yeah. Like, yeah you're yeah. never done. You're never like. Mm. There's you like, haven't learned it all. Yeah, you haven't learned it all. There's, yeah. There's no like end point. No, no. To, mm -mm. Um, your knitting journey. Which is I think part of why it's so fun. Yeah, definitely. And why people do it for years and years and years. It's not a hobby. I mean there's like, just by the wayside. It's just really cool too. Like, I mean, I think I wrote this in In your PhD. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually it's so funny because oh. when you were saying that, I was like, Oh, I just wrote a, like a whole paragraph about that, uh, like on blame though, not on yarn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like when the blame never ends. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so if you'll indulge me for a moment, but um, so the idea of my thesis is all on blame, but it's looking at how we use it in our moral and social relationships with one another, mm -hmm. rather than looking at some sort of like theoretical model of what blame should be. I'm looking at like what, how do actual people use it okay. um, day to day, and what does that tell us about what blame is and how we should understand it. Um, and part of what Very I interesting. yeah yeah <laughs> and I mean so like we've all like we all know what it is to blame mm -hmm. um even if we don't know how to articulate it like we know when we use it we know how we use it it has a bad name for itself because people are like oh no you shouldn't blame you should always forgive and like you should be compassionate and like be a good person blah blah, blah. but I think part of being a good person is holding people to their like expectations that you mm -hmm. have of them mm -hmm. um especially if they're like really embedded kind of moral expectations of like treating each other well mm. um, or treating each other with due respect or like good regard. Um, like all of those different things are really important to how we like go on together in society mm -hmm. yeah. and that hold society together. And so blame actually does this kind of structuring, scaffolding, um, creative, uh, element to our moral lives where we use it to say look you cross that boundary I'm putting this up to say mm -hmm. you can't cross that boundary mm -hmm. um, and I'm not gonna let you change the norms of our relationship mm -hmm. um, in such a way that all of a sudden you're allowed to do that and get off the hook right um, and so what it does is 
yeah, it says, yes, I'm not a doormat, but it also says, like, you have to treat me well. Yeah. Like, we're not going to be friends if you don't treat me well. Yeah. And I'm not going to be friends with you if, uh, or you're not going to be friends with me if I don't treat you well. Yeah. Like, those are the expectations of, yeah. well, friendship, but also just life in general, right? Yeah, I mean, just, like, even your relationship with the person who makes your coffee. And, yeah, like, exactly. The store, the shopkeepers, and the, you Like, know, if you're the, the guy who just makes you coffee, like, all of a sudden says, like, F off, you're gonna be like, well, I'm not going there again. <laughs> yeah, why would I go get coffee there again? Right? And this like, is actually, it's, it's a really interesting thing, because, like, blame is actually really important, and it's tied to, like, what Lisa at This Is Net always says, mm. of, like, when a customer comes to you with a complaint, they're like giving you a chance to make it right, yep. but also explain to them maybe why it went wrong, or you get to figure out how it went wrong. Yeah. And blame lets you do, lets you do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things about how you're saying like, oh, it's never ending with knitting, mm -hmm. or like you're always learning and you're always doing this, is like our moral practice together is never ending. Oh, like no. we're always embedded in it, we're always doing it actively. Mm -hmm. Like. There is no like success condition for being a good person. Mm -hmm. Like you're always doing it. Like you're always trying to do it and like you're gonna fail at it. Mm -hmm. And like blame is part of that of like trying to be good again and mm -hmm. trying to make right on the things that you've messed up on. Yeah, because we all mess up on something. Yeah. At exactly. some point, right? But it's about that Yeah. Yeah, that making right, like what happens after yeah. the thing went wrong. But honestly, right? if somebody's communicating blame to you, they mm -hmm. actually wanna be in a relationship with you. Yeah. Because like, otherwise they would just like piss off. Yeah, if the, co the guy who makes my coffee told me to fuck off. Yeah. I wouldn't bother telling it. I would just not shop there, yet, right? Like, exactly. I wouldn't, like, Whereas if I told you that, you'd yeah. be like, oh my god, like, I'd be what like, happened? What happened? <laughs> like, Can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? <laughs> like, and she'd be like, you, like, you can't, like, maybe you were stressed out or something, but come on, Gailey, you can't say that to me. Yeah, so, because, yeah, I, I want to be in a relationship right? with you. Yeah, exactly. Coffee guy I don't care about so much, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. so um, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, So that's basically all I've been writing about. Now every time Carmen will say anything on this podcast, I'll be like, yes, and that's related to blame in this way. <laughs> Well, we do like to philosophize on this yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. a bit. We do. I mean, you're you're like in it. I'm like really in it right now. I'm like <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. but that's I haven't read twelve books on that. But yeah, <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like I want a a, a non philosopher to read it and be like, mm -hmm. yeah, that seems right. Is that the indication <laughs> that I have to read it now? Ooh. I will read it. You can come to my Viva in the Netherlands. I absolutely. And then we can go out for it. some schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm into I it. think that they have schnitzel in, in the Netherlands. They have some sausage thing. Well, schnitzel isn't sausage. Oh, is it? Why is that schnitzel with sausage? Schnitzel's like a. Is it like a dessert? No. <laughs> what is it? It's a dessert. Um, it's. <laughs> I feel like we should just call this episode the one where Kaylee learns what schnitzel <laughs> is. Doesn't even know how to say it, but. <laughs> Well, let's try that. Schnitzel. Schnitzel. Okay. I can I can replicate it. I, I just can't say it for my own. <laughs> Schnitzel is um, it, it is meat. Mm. Um, so if you get like a traditional Wiener Schnitzel, it is veal and it's pounded oh. very thin. Mm -hmm. And then it is breaded. Oh, fried. okay. So it's um, it's <laughs> so like an sausage. Italian uh, veal kind of thing that I've had before. Yeah, and you get um. You get like in Germany, you get Putin schnitzel, which is like turkey. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'd be all for this, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, gluten-free breadcrumbs. Yes, well, so in Italy, mm. because they are so amazing, mm. they just love people who are gluten-free. I've had like gluten-free this nah. schnitzel okay. in Italy, okay. <laughs> but they call it something else, which is like driving me insane that I can't think of a word I in Italian. It is. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if the Dutch do a schnitzel. No, but I they definitely thinking, do like fries with mayonnaise and ketchup, which yeah, I love. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, they do that, and then they. I feel like every time I go to the Netherlands, which isn't that often, I haven't been in ages. But okay. there's always like things that I think look German. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, depending on how close you are to the border, there. There's a lot well, of that's the thing in Groningen. Right? Um, mm -hmm. Which you'd probably say differently because the Dutch say it differently. Um, and say Groningen. Yeah, and they say Honing, Honingen or something. Um, but I can't say it right, so I just say it the American way, which is Groningen. If you can't, if you can't do it right, do it bad. <laughs> do it really bad. <laughs> do it really bad. That's our advice for everything in life. <laughs> 
You can't do the Just make right. it really obvious you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Either be fucking excellent or, or just, just call it quits. Yeah. <laughs> just call it quits. Don't even try. <laughs> no, don't, we don't no, need that. Try, try, but don't worry about being bad. Yeah. Actually, I think that is actually really good advice. I think that's great advice. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about being bad. It's totally fine. Yeah. As long as you enjoy it. Yeah. Who cares? Yep. But anyway, I say Groningen, but they are right on the German border. So maybe yeah. that's why there's so many Germans looking for Possibly. Foods. They're gonna hate me. If any Dutch person is listening to this, they're gonna be like, no, that's Dutch food. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Um, anyway, well, that was not anything that we had uh, planned to talk about. Well, we didn't plan to talk about anything, and we didn't really set <laughs> yeah. up our like index ahead no of time plan. like you wanted. <laughs> so. Yeah, and um, what was it? Our yearly evaluation. Carmen was like, "What do you, what do you want from, from going forward?" And I was like, oh, "It would be really great if we had like a regular weekly meeting where we like talked about like what we were gonna do in the podcast next time, and like we created like different like ideas and charts we follow through." <laughs> Hasn't happened at all, <laughs> which is not Carmen's fault. It's also my fault. Like I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be really organized. Just go with it. <laughs> the thing is, we've shown up and we've done it. Yeah, we've so we've been doing this done. for like nearly a yeah. year now. We've done like 23 episodes, I yeah. guess, in total. Which is really good. It is really good. Yeah. I'm very proud of us. I mean, considering like we started it with no plan at all. Zero plan. Um, I actually I cleaned my office yesterday mm. and I made enough room on the couch in there that is mm. also the bed, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to sit on and like do some further thing and I sat there and I was like this is where Kaylee and I filmed the first episode yes. of the podcast because we didn't get our shit together mm -hmm. to uh well no we did get our shit together but then you forgot the memory card and then we had to go home no I w uh I think I was still home did I even leave the house I don't remember what happened but, like, <laughs> yeah. we were like okay well we have to do this we have to do this place. come on let's do it and we're just doing yeah, it we're, we're just do. starting but that is the hardest yeah, thing. Yeah, the yeah. starting is the hardest thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like this you can always find reasons to like put it off and yeah. put it off. And I think like I mean <laughs> this is also with knitting. I say this in every single cow, like or every time there's a new knitter and they're like going off on their first like sweater project. Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't get like you will get overwhelmed. Yeah. But like don't let your overwhelm like dictate what you do. Yep. Because um somebody just whistled at us. Woohoo! Or maybe us. it was a dog. Uh, <laughs> let's pretend it's us. Yeah. <laughs> and, but that's what I always say to, to when you first start is starting is the hardest part. Yeah. So we add, yeah. like it's one of the biggest things we talk about in business coaching as yeah. well is like that you just have to do the thing. You just have mm -hmm. to like get over yourself or the fear or like yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it is and just start yeah. um, and get momentum. Yeah. I mean, so one of the things I've been doing um, which I learned from the Atomic Habits book. I still haven't read that. Yeah. Well, I bought it when you told you me. You kind of really just needed reading introduction, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll lend it to you. No, I, I have the oh, book. Okay. You, told, you recommended it. Yeah. I went and bought it. Just have read it. I mean, the rest of the chapters are great, too. But yeah, you, you kind of just need to read the introduction. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, and that... It, so I have a lot of like weird emotional crap around my PhD and everything. And part of what has always been hard for me is I feel like, like we all do at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have. I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened. I have a whole story about it. <laughs> I've gone to therapy about it loads of times. <laughs> but um, part of the reason why where I'm at with a PhD is like I do just really want to get it done, and I've also like been able to decarpment not decompartmentalize. That's not the right word, but understand how it got into where I am and why mm. and everything like that and a lot of it is like my fault but also a lot of it Blame is yourself. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is also fine like taking responsibility for that is a big part of it but also like there were a lot of structural stuff that was not going right mm. in my life at the time yeah. and stuff like that and also there was a pandemic all of a yeah sudden. I mean that like very much messed yeah. up your original plan yeah yeah, yeah. So. definitely um and you were so like, for me, we're gonna yarn shop for a while. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna want to run. Well, I think part of it was um, to like be very honest about all of it is um, I've always had like this thing of I have to be perfect. I don't know why, um, but like I've always been like, oh no, I, I'm a very high achiever. Like I've always done well in my exams and at uni, and like I was always <laughs> like busting my ass at school. Mm -hmm. um, and I think 
when I graduated from university for my bachelor's degree, it was one of these things where I realized that all the adults that were telling me, you don't have to be that hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. I like finally knew what they were talking about mm -hmm. and it made me really depressed that Aww. I had spent all of that energy on something that mattered, definitely mattered, especially mm -hmm. the amount I was putting into it. Like none of that I think was a waste, but I didn't have to be so harsh on myself mm -hmm. and that led me to a complete burnout. I had my first full on like breakdown when I moved from the East Coast to Arizona and I had basically just like two months of not being able to leave my house without having a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And then I got through that, I was there for three years, I was doing really well, I applied for a new PhD program because I wanted to kind of move but also there was a really interesting opportunity at Sheffield mm -hmm. to work with somebody who was really great in my field who basically like she literally wrote the book called Epistemic Injustice, and that's part of the thing that I study. And she's also writing a book on blame right now. Okay. <laughs> blame, she's actually focusing more on forgiveness, but blame's like the first two chapters. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, then like everything was really great in Sheffield. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but everything was really great in Sheffield. And then uh, the pandemic hit, and yeah. I was suddenly completely isolated mm. from all of the structures that helped me deal and cope with difficult mm. things in life, right? Mm -hmm. um, I only had Sam that was around and um, like, I mean, everybody knows what happened in the pandemic. Like we were all there and like we all experienced it in our own interesting way. Um, but for me, I started having panic attacks every day. Mm. Um, like couldn't like That's very operate. exhausting. Yeah, it was really well, exhausting. Being stressful and whatnot, yeah. but like very exhausting. And so it was really funny though. It's, well, it's not funny. But it's funny now, I started keeping a journal because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I need to get all the negative thoughts out mm -hmm. so I can like do, be productive, right? Mm -hmm. And I wrote all these negative thoughts out and when we were moving, Sam found it like last week. And he was <laughs> like, he was like, oh my God. <laughs> Wait, but he read it? <laughs> well, because he was, he was honestly being like, can this, is this something that we can throw yeah, away? Like, like it wasn't labeled like Kaylee's worst, darkest thoughts ever. <laughs> It wasn't that organized. <laughs> but he like opened it. He was like, what is this? And I was like, oh yeah, that's everything I was feeling during the pandemic. And he's like, what? <laughs> but anyway, so going back to it was really <laughs> difficult for me. And, but the thing is, is like starting it is always the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Like once I'm in it, once I'm doing it, once you're like in this flow state, it's fine. Yeah. Like it is absolutely fine once you're doing the thing, like you get to figure it out, you get to problem solve, but so much of what gets in our way is our own self. Mm -hmm. And for me, like part of what I learned from this Atomic Habits book is if you're scared of something, pair it with something that you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing <laughs> every morning with my PhD is I found Settlers of Catan online, <laughs> which yeah. is a board game. Yeah. I know the game. <laughs> What were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about my feet. Oh, starting. Yeah. So, oh, I, and using pig yarn. Yes, <laughs> and I was going to say um, that it's not irrelevant at all. Like, everybody, absolutely everybody has that I don't know how to start. I don't know where to start. Like, I'm mm. doing that right now with my business coaching stuff. Yeah. Like, I keep, like, having sort of, I'm calling them false starts mm. um, for a variety of reasons. And it's super silly. Yeah. Like... It is based on nothing relevant, factual, or anything. <laughs> um, but it's the hardest thing to start. Yeah, Like, definitely. it absolutely is. And it doesn't matter what it is. A knitting project, a PhD, a new business, a new yeah. relationship. Yeah, like, anything. Um, I think awesome. the only thing that's easy is a new bottle of wine. Yeah, I mean, that is pretty good. <laughs> Easy. Open it up, try it. I mean, especially if you're like at Wolf Wines or Walcott House, like all of our neighbors somehow have been like, been like okay, we need to move to your yarn yeah. story area because... Because we are awesome. <laughs> We're awesome and these two girls will not say no to another bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I like total luscious. I know. Uh, speaking <laughs> of, actually I will mention this, Wolf Wine is our new... Um, podcast and uh retreat sponsors oh so this is not a wolf wine bottle episode but, you know, yeah um, yeah oh, okay that's great yeah that's news yeah you haven't told me that sorry <laughs> live reaction <laughs> the 
to be fun. <laughs> right? Isn't that something that somebody told us that uh, we should do more of? Like live reactions to things. <laughs> oh yes, actually, uh, yes. Um, Danny has sent me an entire list of uh, knitting in film and TV. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Great though. This is that. That's actually really cute. Yeah. Uh, so, and then actually, he brought it up again recently, and he was like, "No." Um, he goes, "Just get James to get the clips, since I know you don't know how to edit. <laughs> like, get the like, clips from everywhere. So, like, see if James can do that part." Because I sent you the list. I, I know where it all is, and I was like, "Okay, season three, season three, yeah, season three. <laughs> And I've been watching, I've been rewatching New Girl, and she knits oh, like a I lot love that. in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I've been enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Wasn't yeah. there like a whole, excuse me, um, like knitting Christmas movie? Uh, yeah, the one with Brooke, Brooke Shields, Shields yeah. uh, in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never watched it. Yeah. Should I not watch it? Should I watch I it? I think we should watch it. <laughs> yeah. I think we should react to the knitting. Yeah. <laughs> I also know someone who was asked to consult as like the knitting expert on that mm. movie and then declined. Oh. Because they don't want to Do I know them. this person? You have maybe met them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who it is. For cool. Sure. Mm. Love it. That's their story to tell, not mine. So. Not mine. Yeah. Um, well, right. so, so the things we've we covered. What we're wearing, what you're knitting, yeah. uh, what, <laughs> what you're scared of. My, what I'm scared of of my life. <laughs> the entire history of Kaylee's anxiety. <laughs> well, Max is going to be like, or not Max, James is going to be like, what am I going to do with this episode? <laughs> How am I going to promote this? <laughs> I don't really know. Um, <clears throat> but our starting is, that, that's the clip starting, though for him, right? Yes. <laughs> starting, starting is, is the hardest key. part. Yeah. Um, we had somebody actually recently at Knit Night who um, is a knitter and like, has knit loads of things but um she's new to bath and everything okay. and uh, she wanted to do a new project mm. so she's doing the ship cowl mm. um and this is something that we like kept saying to her like don't get overwhelmed yeah like it is actually an easy pattern mm -hmm. but yeah the starting <laughs> starting bit's a bit like annoying yeah and yeah. like and also she was using dark yarn at night yes like <laughs> yes and I mean, I literally start every pattern. I start three times, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Definitely. I almost never get it right. Yeah. And we've said this a lot, too, about Spin Cycle. Like, we are Spin Cycle, like, fanatics, right? We are. Um, Addicts, fanatics. But almost, like, every project we do, we're like, I don't like this. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I don't like it. What? Why did I do this? <laughs> Why did I choose these colors? I don't and, like it. And then we keep going, and we're like, this is the best project this ever. ever. <laughs> like, now that I'm here, I'm like, oh my god. The spinsters know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know why we have doubt at the beginning. Right. Like, exactly. We're always wrong. <laughs> we're always wrong. <laughs> and it's never horrible. No, it's always really It's always good. like more amazing than you actually think yeah. it's ever going to be. So Also, my new theory with like the shift cowl in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we put together three color combos of threes yeah. for that like all the time. Um, is that it literally doesn't matter what you pick. Yeah. Like because I've done so many over the years mm. I'm like none of these ever turn out bad Just and also none whatever. of them turn out the way that you think they're gonna do nope like my one that which I wear all the freaking time yeah when I picked those three colors I was like oh my god this is gonna be like the brightest cowl ever and mm -hmm. it's like more moody than bright yeah it's very moody. <laughs> yeah very awesome I don't know what I was like I think it's the thing when you have them in the skein mm -hmm. sometimes you're like oh I see all of it and you, I didn't get to the bright bits yeah well because you don't use the mm -hmm. full skein in yeah that. but yeah, I mean, I'm now much less precious mm. about putting yeah. combos together. Yeah, so, like, yeah. it will turn out great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. They're all awesome. Um, Somebody said that in the Cal recently, too. They're like, mm. honestly, like, sometimes it doesn't even matter what, what yarn you pick up. Like, if you have, like, a whole thing of spin cycle, just, yeah. just go for it. Just pick something. Yeah. <laughs> just go with it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can get Kaylee to that part of life. Yeah, no, like, it's never going to happen. <laughs> Keep going. I can say that and like I can recommend it to people, but I, I will never be doing that. No, because you ripped your uh, sweater back twice yeah. due to yeah. mistakes in Mist Well, it was a, that first one was a mistake. Okay, the first one. I like mistake. literally did the pattern wrong. Yeah. But the. I mean, it still looked nice, but. I'm not ripping back to move yeah. my flower, is all I'm saying. Yeah. Whatever. Because <laughs> again. 
I'm also not knitting because I know that I'm on a decrease row and I know oh. if I decrease now I will forget that I have decreased. Yeah, don't you so know? anyway. What are you wanting? But um, we I have think we were going to pick some colors for a new pattern that we yep. want to do, which actually half of our current cowl might jump to. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like all we've been talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um so Alex Bird has a brand new pattern called the Sar Vest. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll put a picture up instead of grabbing the photo over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very cute. She's designed it in Walcott Yarns and uh, Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool. Um, so if you don't know Alex too, so she is an Estonian American um, Canadian. Canadian knitwear designer. Um, she lives here in Bath. Um, mm -hmm. She's one of our good friends. Yes. We love her. Yes. Um, and the Sar Vest is a like very how would you describe it? It is a colorwork pattern. Yeah, it is based on a traditional type of sweater from a region that I am now forgetting what it's called. Oh, a Troy. Oh, is it in uh, it's it a Troy? Is, uh, yes. That's why I love so, it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's she, Alex wrote a book like 2 years ago now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Traditions Revisited um Modern Estonian Knits. Love that book. The cover of it has a sweater called a Troy. Um, it's one of my, um, big, like, I have wanted to knit this sweater for ages. Yeah. I am really intimidated to knit it. I actually don't, like, Alex has told me, she's like, you don't have to be intimidated. Like, mm. you can do that. Like, it'll be fine. Like, it is actually two. It's only, like, two colors. But, yeah, it's a stranded, it's like a classic stranded color work style. But there's also the Kinu braids, braids. which, um, they're very cool. And they're also very easy. Although mm. I've only done them flat and someone was mentioning that they're very different in the round. <laughs> to oh, me the other really? day. I was like, okay. oh. They're still very easy, but yeah. there's more yarn twisting. But Alex also too, she with, um, I don't, I don't know, are they in this pattern? Like with a lot of her patterns, she has these amazing illustrations that show you how to do techniques. Yeah. Whether or not they're in the pattern. They're on the, I think yeah. there's like QR codes to tutorials. Yeah. And she's running a knit along for yeah. this starting like April 1st. Um, yeah. so I think I'm going to join. Yeah. I've already joined. Yeah. I've already like gone on the Ravelry page and been like, oh my god, I'm so excited! Okay, like, I'm done. your number one fan! <laughs> <laughs> and Alex is like, shut up! <laughs> Thanks, Kaylee! <laughs> yeah. like, see you Wednesday! Yeah, exactly! <laughs> <laughs> We're here to hype up our friends, know, that's know, like what we do. <laughs> um, and, oh, it's just, it's so pretty. I'm probably personally going to be quite boring and do the exact colors that Alex has designed it in because she used our custom colorway from Spin Cycle Next Level and she used one of my favorite Opus colors, which is, uh, oh my Spellbound. God. Spellbound. <laughs> I'm like the, well, the I word named it. just read out. Oh yeah, you did name it. I named it. Yeah. So look at that connection. It's like one of your oh favorites God. and I named it. Oh, uh, because you're like my favorite. <laughs> um, and I'm basically ditching the tessellated vest that I started mm -hmm. and have gotten nowhere on. Yeah, yeah. And I have next level mm. from that. Did you use Spellbound for that? No, no I used you Hickory. Were, yes. Um, mm, I remember that. Which I also think would be really nice, but I think this is just nicer, like yeah, a little brighter. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's, it's very clear. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do exactly what Alex did. <laughs> have matching vest. And so, so... But I did pick some other color combos that I would maybe consider yeah. if I didn't do this. So do you want to do yours first? Sure. Um... So I have committed, like every other knitter in the world, to trying to use your my stash. Um, so I was also going to uh, basically um, use because I, if you go back to like episode whatever in season one, <laughs> you'll see the way back when the the colors I picked out for the original tessellated vest that I did, not oh, the one yeah. I actually knit, yeah. which was Amaze Balls. Um, and I still want to actually really do the tessellated in that and like I really 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 want to um, and it was using Opus in Aperol mm -hmm. with uh, Isiger like which is a bright orange yeah, yeah, yeah. bright bright orange yeah. like think of Aperol spritz yeah. like that orange that's, that's, that's why, why I named, named it, it. <laughs> that way. Um, and then it's like with a um, this is before fluff too mm -hmm. so it was with a bright orange Isiger yeah and then, like, even brighter than that orange, I think, that we have in there. I don't um, think we currently have yeah, the orange yeah. you were using. Yeah, we have a paler Sorry, orange. Sorry, there's a cabinet yeah. behind <laughs> the camera that we are looking at right now. Um, and then the spin cycle I've got for that is Sunset Strip, which is also amazing. But they, are they discontinued? It's discontinued. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Sold the last skein to Unravel this weekend. <laughs> yeah, so I have two skeins of that at home. And for Alex's best, I need three. And I was like, I know there's one more in the shop. I know there is. And then I was like, 
And, but this was this was Monday night, right? So like literally the day after. Yeah. I think we sold it on Sunday too. <laughs> Tell me that because I was like, we have one scene of this discontinued. Someone, someone's gonna fall in love with oh it here my God. at this festival. <laughs> it's so funny because like every knit night, I've come into the shop being like, oh, it's still there. Should I just like get it? <laughs> so you lose. <laughs> <laughs> but I buy way too much spin cycle as it is. Sorry, I just like spit on my lip. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut that out. <laughs> I will try to cut that out. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> so yes, so I went on, mon on Monday night. I was like, I know that we have one more skein of it. I know we do. Like, it should be on the website. And I like look on the website, and like Carmen's taking that colorway off of it. And I'm like, that means she sold it on a ramble. <laughs> I was like, Arr. so I can't do that. So I have to do something else. But I have two skeins of Opus in Evergreen. Mm. It's which a lovely Evergreen. Yeah. I mean, actually, it doesn't read that bad, actually, from back there. It's a bit black back. Yeah. A bit dark. It's... Um, there you go. You can kind of see it, but not really. Um, it's a really, really lovely, like, forest green. Yeah. But also, too, it's not, like... I mean, it's like the perfect green, to be honest. Like, it's not too blue. Mm -hmm. um, not too yellow. Not too yellow. Like, it's green, green. Mm -hmm. And it's this beautiful, beautiful green that I I have wanted to do loads of things in. I mm -hmm. love this. I have a sweater in it. Yeah. So nice. You have one of Alex's. I have one of Alex's, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have that one, and I also have two skeins of Opus um, in Cove. Yeah. Um, at That's home. left over from your shift again. Yeah, because yeah. I was supposed to apparently use four skeins for that. No, three skeins for that, and I think I used one and a half. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, Opus goes. It goes a really long way. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I have one and a half at home. I think maybe I could potentially get away with it because I think the first three sizes are two. Yeah. Um, I am doing the third size though. Mm -hmm. So I might need another one, but that's fine yeah. if I do. Um, this is one of my favorite colors of Opus. It's very good color. So yeah. anyway, those are the two Opus I'm considering. And then, so for, I'll do the, um, I don't know why I picked three, <laughs> three of these, but basically I need three of them, so that's why. Um, <laughs> so this is the one I think I'm probably gonna go for, which okay. reminds me of my mom a lot. Aw, that's yeah. so sweet. I think this, she would do this. So I, she's gonna uh, want this. I feel like Jen's gonna jump over to that cow with us too. Oh well, I've been texting her like all day about it. Okay. So. <laughs> Very nice, Jen. Um. Oh God. Let's not drop that in the yeah. champagne. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I think I'm gonna use it with the Meadows. Um. Which is this lovely. So Meadows comes in like loads of different ones. This is actually a lot more minty than our previous skeins, yeah. which tends to be a bit greener. It does like have some nice purpley bits. Yeah, it has these really nice purple bits. Um, look at oh my god, look at those nails with that. Uh, I like I think <laughs> oh, like, I think look that's at that. Easy. Yeah, that matches already. Um, so I'm thinking that's probably what it is. It's a little less like loud than yeah, what I go tonal. for. Yeah. It's very tonal, mm. but I think it will be a really nice sweater that I'll then like yes. sweater vest that I'll wear a yeah, lot. Yeah, you can wear it loads. Um, the other option, which could go with this one is Big Sky, which I think is a little bit more interesting. Mm. Oh my God, I don't know what to choose. So this is Big Sky. Um, so it's got like more yellows and grays and more tealy greens um, with a bit of orange in there, like very. It's like a batch of Big Sky without the pink that yeah. normally comes in Big Sky. So. Yeah, exactly. So actually that's quite cool too. Mm -hmm. That's quite cool. I feel like you like that better. I actually don't. Yeah. Weirdly. You like the meadows? I do like the meadows better. Mm. So then if it's I was, uh, you want to know why though? Why? I really hate orange and green together. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah, 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 I do know this about you. <laughs> but that's not like yeah, but those there is some beavers orange. or whatever it is. Yeah, well, yes. Is that what it is? That is part of it, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I am from Eugene, Oregon, so I'm a duck fan. Ducks, okay. The, <laughs> yeah, sorry, they're green <laughs> I thought and it was yellow. Beavers. <laughs> no, 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 no. Our, our tribals are the Oregon State beavers. Oh. Which are orange and black. Okay. So that's probably where my hatred of orange comes from, but honestly, I don't know. 
You do that and I look terrible in it. So. You don't look that bad in uh, I really do look terrible in orange. It depends on the face. Like, you look good in that. Yeah, but it's not really orange orange. It's like... Yeah, but that's like Kaylee orange. Like, that's a rusty orange. Yeah, but like, orange. this yeah, makes I'm, me look like I'm dead. Yeah, but I'm not good in that either. And I'm an orange queen. Mm. Anyway. Love you, marmalade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks good with lots of people's. Yeah. I mean, but, I love the yeah, bumpy yeah. cardigan. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, that looks amazing that on her really too. Good. Yeah, uh, we have someone at Knit Night, yeah, um, who has just made bumpy cardigan using... with sunset strip. Yeah, marmalade with sunset strip, and it looks amazing. It's like it is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. Amaze balls, even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I went with Cove. We were putting that together. So this is Stay Out of the Forest. This is one of my favorite combos, actually, of yeah. is Cove with Stay Out of the Forest. I really love that Stay Out of the Forest, too. Like, it's got so much orange in it. Like, I also just love the color name. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's an option, too, which I'm very tempted by, which is bad. Well, like, that would mean buying a whole bunch of spin cycle. Well, I mean, that's buying a whole bunch. I have to buy a spin cycle, either uh, way. Right, because you don't like, have I don't enough have, sunset strip. I don't have enough sunset strip. Okay. Yeah, so, or I go with Cove and Big Sky. I like that better than the Evergreen. Yeah, and Big Sky. I think personally. that's right. Um. So, I guess put in the comments. I'll actually read them. Um, <laughs> I actually do read all of your comments. I, I, like, go on and stalk them a little bit. And, like, he'll be like, oh, Cad Creates. Like, like my thing. I actually changed my YouTube thing oh, did you? to Cad Creates. Because I was like, like I hope people brain. actually know who I am now. That's nice. Because that's my Instagram. Yeah. Um, also, I thought that would be fun. I mean, that's pretty. That's a very Carmen <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, I'm not going to do that, but I no, do love it. But the, yeah. That's Kolkata, isn't it? Yeah. Like, bright pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, those are my options. What are yours? <laughs> okay, so my <laughs> options are, um... Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, I love... We have a really cool batch of overshadow. It's like my favorite kind of purple. Mm. It's like a very blue purple. So just on gray, I think that would be very striking. Yeah, definitely. It, um, yeah, overshadows like these bluey purples, and then we've got our classic opus gray. I think that'll be that'll be really poppy, nice. but like classic, very wearable. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna grab something. Okay. You keep going. I'll keep talking here mm -hmm. by myself because that's fun. And then this here is inspired by um, Becca's pressed flower <laughs> shawl that she's doing in the cow. And I really like this combo. I actually want to make the great gingham in it. Um, so I think it would be amazing for this too, which is charcoal, which is an almost black with syringa, oh, which I love that. is like yeah. purples and grays on the dyed in the wool. Um, I think this is like moody and amazing. Who's calling me shop at this hour of night? Out of area. <laughs> okay, well. So we're not in the open. US. Who thinks we're open? Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't even think it's a US number. <laughs> so those would be my choices if I wasn't going to use, if I wasn't basically recreating um, Alex's original design. Okay. Oh, oh, Kaylee's come back. Yes. Okay. You've got more yarn. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm doing this now, but anyway, my mom <laughs> wants to use Spellbound. <laughs> I'm using Spellbound, Jen. Yes, well, so she has two skeins of Spellbound okay. in her stash mm -hmm. that I think I bought her. Um, Sounds nice when, Yeah, I think I, maybe she bought it herself. Okay. But when you held up those, I thought that would be <gasps> yes. excellent. Reykjavik, right? which is like a gray. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the new semi-solids. I think that is... That's super pretty. That would be really nice. With It also pulls mm -hmm. out a lot of the purple in yep. Reykjavik, which is lovely. Yep. Um, I can see my mom wearing that. Yep. I can also see her doing it with this one. Yes, this um, is Havana. But she, I know she's doing... So she's doing her pressed flowers in that one. Oh, she's using Havana. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Havana's like a gray green. Yeah. Kind of. Mm -hmm. So all the semi solids are named after, si after cities, which is Oh, cool. really? I didn't yeah. know that. And then the other one I thought that she could do was Wallflower when I was online the other day mm. trying to pick out colors for her. Which I think is interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's probably my least favorite. It's good. But I think I think the thing the is, others are more interesting. There's some wallflower that's more pink. Yes, this is quite purple. That's a quite a purple one. Yeah. We don't have any pink ones over there. Yeah. 
And then when I was just over there, I thought also the meadows could be good with it. Yeah, we have yeah. a really good batch of the meadows we right do. now. We yeah. do. Um, also, I think we have all the colors to the original. Yes. Yeah, moment. yeah, yeah. So, um, let's see if that focuses. Do we have um, next level though? No, we don't have any next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on order. Oh, the original shift. I the original shift, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can only do the original SAR best because I happen to have next level yeah, in my yeah. stash. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we do have... I still also really want to do something with Bumble. Yeah. Bumble oh, is yeah, our bright such yellow. such a good color. Yeah. Um, and it is like the perfect yellow. I think there could be some fun stuff with that. Actually, you know what? Okay. Yep. I'm going to leave you on camera yep. for a minute. <laughs> This is why we do this in the shop. Right, exactly. We get to like pick and play with yarn and yeah. we, well, I think too, like every time we sit down to do the <laughs> podcast, we're like looking at all the yarn as yeah. we're doing it, that we're like, oh my God, you could do this, you could do that, you could do the other thing. Mm -hmm. And then we're always like, oh, I'm not going to get up and talk about it. But actually but we can not? do that. Why not? I actually really like that with um, the, uh, well, <laughs> this one. Uh, Afternoon Delight. Well, that, okay, so that's where I was stopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that this, the color of this isn't showing up very well right yeah. now. I think it's, um, okay, so we've got Bumble B. Is it called Bumble Bee? Bumble Bee. Um, we <laughs> didn't just call it Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> Mixing up with the dating app. Mm. Uh, so this is with Sweetwater, which is looking quite orange right now, but it's actually very corally. Yeah, it's in most perfect light. coral, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this would be quite fresh mm -hmm. and funky. Um, and then the other one is Afternoon Delight. Oh, I love that. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. I also. But also. Oh, no, that one. Give like me, this give one. me oh. Reykjavik. Yes. I think that'd be awesome. I mean, Reykjavik is such a good color, isn't it? It is. Bumblebee and Reykjavik. I think that would be. That's really fun. Amazing. Um, Kermit would also look really good. Mm. Like, that'd be like the opposite of my cocoa vest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As you said that, I was thinking, oh, like a green could be really nice mm. with that. I mean, this isn't Kermit. I don't no. know. But I think that but could be really fun that too. That is very fun with Big Sky. Yeah. Well, this skein of this Big Sky. Skin. I mean, even if it has a bit of pink though. Yeah, I love I mean, pink and yellow. Pink and yellow is a great combo. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have some Big Sky from what I was originally going to use yes. for the test lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You changed your mind. Which, yeah. well, because the next level arrived. Right. Didn't it? Mm hmm. Um, Why do we do this to ourselves? I don't know. <laughs> I cleaned up part of my stash yesterday because I just need to clean my office a little bit. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go through my stash a bit. And we always do a swap mm. table at the retreat. Right. So I thought, let me see if I have anything that I want to take. Um, and I opened my spin cycle drawer and I was like, nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. None of that's gone. Uh, but then I was like, oh, I've got some nice stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, you do. The problem is like, uh, well, you get first dibs. <laughs> well, I, not always. I've been no, out of I town do. for a couple of... No, actually, you know who does? Susan. Susan. <laughs> yeah, someone said it unraveled. Someone was like, do you have any ghost ranch? And I was like, no. And they were like, did Susan take all of it? <laughs> I, think, yeah. I was like, mm, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. And I told Susan, but that, actually, like, no, I didn't this look time. Look at this. Oh, yeah, we do have Ghost Ranch and Plump. Yeah, um, I'm going to get another Ghost Ranch. I think I'm going to get like three skeins of that and do a, a leaf thing. Yeah, Ghost Ranch is like our favorite color. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes with everything. It's amazing. It, it turns out every, really well over time. I mean, all the combos of it is just ridiculous. It is like one of the most perfect colors that they do. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we don't and that is, the that is, ranch, I mean, Susan has her own distinct style. I have my own distinct style. You have your own distinct style. All three of us fucking love it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've already sworn like five yeah, times. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, mm. Why am I thinking I can't swear? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> We're not on the BBC. Yeah. Or in Catholic school. Also not in Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if we were? Hmm. Well, I, I, that's what I did my whole life. I did not. <laughs> until, until college, but yeah. I almost went to Catholic high school because they recruited me to play basketball. Yes, yeah. Well, I went to Catholic daycare to mm -hmm. 12th grade. Okay. And then my university is, uh, or where I went to college, was uh, uh, awkwardly named St. Mary's. So people thought it was Catholic, but it's not because the name of the city, St. Mary's City oh. in Maryland. Okay. But anyway. Um, 
So yeah. Okay. That's why I'm writing a PhD on blame now. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where that topic came from. That's why I think it was like the first time I uh, joined the shop. I went to the Walcott Street meeting and mm. I ended up speaking two hours to the two different rec uh, pastors yeah. on the street <laughs> because both of them realized I was doing something or I, I was talking to them about I was doing a PhD on blame and they were like, blame, interesting. I do a lot of forgiveness. Let's debate. <laughs> Yeah, but Roger's like the best. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, Roger's the, the um, rector or... The, what are they called? The what? Vicar. Vicar. Yeah. Um, at St. Michael's, which is basically Walcott Street in Bath is uh, has a church on either end of it. Mm -hmm. And he's down at St. Michael's without. Um, it's called St. Michael's without because once upon a time it was outside the city walls. Mm -hmm. A little fun fact. Whereas about... there used to be a St. Michael's within. Yeah. But I don't think it exists anymore. I don't think it does. Yeah. No. I think it was bombed during the uh, Blitz. Mm. I might be making this up. This might be fake news. But I think I read <laughs> that it was bombed during the Blitz and then like things moved on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Roger's awesome. Yeah, he is. He, he is. He is. I mean, I get on with any like vicar rector because <laughs> we have loads to talk about i love it um i i got the award for the best religion student in high school obviously yeah. i would not have gotten that yeah it's well because i was like let's debate this let's like figure out what's happening here and the freaking nuns loved it i think i <laughs> was a skeptic from birth well so well i think that's what why i was like so engaged is like let's let's like really dissect this like we had this really great class. Sorry, this is another tangent, but we had this really great class in high school. It was called Christology, and it was all looking at the historical context of the Bible mm. and looking at the way it was written and like uh, the interpretation of God's word through the context of society at the time okay. and why mm -hmm. certain things were written the way that they were um, and how to interpret them from that. Um, and so, like, I loved that class because it was all looking at history and like basically looking at then. The Bible of the Gospels, um, as well as we did a little bit of the Old Testament as well, um, of especially Leviticus, um, which is all about the different laws in Judaism, mm -hmm. um, and it looked at like okay, in context, actually, this makes complete sense, mm -hmm. like why why this was written in this way and mm -hmm. for what it was. But then, like you, I mean, I think this is what like made me want to go down the route of philosophy is. The nuns really encourage us to think about what is the principle that they're trying to communicate okay. through that yep. that might be not dated mm -hmm. anymore. Like, what's that moral principle of mm -hmm. like? And and for Jesus, it's easy love. Yep. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote this paper in sorry this is another tangent. I wrote this paper in college that was basically like Jesus was basically a Buddhist. Ah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I All took about a, compassion. <laughs> I took a Bible as literature class. Oh, that's um, cool. At uni, and that was quite interesting because mm. uh, we dissected the Bible. Uh, well, actually, just Genesis mm. uh, as if it was a piece of literature. That's and really cool. Nothing. Yeah. Else, uh, it was quite interesting. I mean, looking across different cultures at different creation stories, it's fascinating how many different cultures share similar principles mm. in their stories, mm -hmm. um, and how we all like think about the world and the creation of the world in different ways but what Roger's really good at is like he loves us like yeah, he yeah. like if he was like uh, we should have Roger on the podcast <laughs> he'd be like Roger. what <laughs> but um he's such a great person to talk to and like he's just so knowledgeable um he gave me some really good resources for my PhD as well um he had spent like quite a uh a big part of his career in um, Liverpool, mm -hmm. working with people who were victims of the Liverpool Huddersfield crush incident, yep. um, and working with the families and people involved. And one of the things that I study in my thesis of blame is um, looking at who doesn't get to blame mm -hmm. um, and who doesn't get to listen to their blame. Mm -hmm. um, and he gave me a really great example of like people who were from Merseyside or had a really scouse accent mm -hmm. oftentimes would dismiss their testimony of what mm -hmm. actually happened during the crush incident. Wow. And for years and years and years, they were discriminated against because of largely just their accent but also what that accent re represented which was a working class Merseyside right. 
kind of background and mm -hmm. like that was seen as untrustworthy. And he wrote this amazing article um, talking about that testimony from the families that he was working with in Liverpool. Okay. Um, like, he just is amazing. Sounds like a very yeah. Roger thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, if you're ever in, if you're ever in Bath, definitely yeah. go to St. Mike's. It's also one of my, like, I think it is one of the most beautiful churches. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning. They have a cafe in there, um, so you can just so like, get a coffee yeah. and stuff. And Even if you're not religious, lovely. like, yeah. it is gorgeous. It's a really and lovely venue. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had um, Alex's uh, book launch party yes, in there, did. actually, to yeah. like tie that all yeah, back yeah. around. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it all comes together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have, I mean, that's the one of the really nice things about Walk Street in yeah. general, is like, all the businesses and community organizations on the street are very, like, let's get together, let's work together, let's like make this yeah. all And that's work the history of, of kind of Walcott as well, yeah. like it's always been that way and you know we're known as like the artisan district which you know mm -hmm. like I think you can take in loads of different ways and yeah. um, the history yeah. of it though is like quite embedded in like very much trade work and basically yep. anything that you wanted to... Well if we go way back yeah. it was like the cattle market. Yes and, and then if um... we go even way way back it was like prostitutes. Yep. Which come on no. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> pretty artisan? Yeah. I don't know. Pretty bohemian. <laughs> I was actually talking to um, our landlord here the other day about a couple things and um, uh, he, our landlord of this building, he lives upstairs and like he was an architect and so he like rebuilt this building mm. once upon a time. Uh, so he intimately knows like all the bits of it and we were talking about this like lower bit of the ceiling in here um, and how Apparently there were loads of those along this, but that is um, a structural joist or whatever, mm -hmm. so that can come out. Because this is where uh, the meat was hung to like head over to the ice house, which is next door. Oh, cool. So it like basically, I think there used to be a hole in that wall right there, and it swung oh, through like wow, they, they were yeah, attached yeah. to that building. So at where some the point. spin cycle is, is where the meat used to go. And basically, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's interesting to like see that history. Yeah, yeah. The building next door to us, you can still see the faint ice house. Mm. Um, yeah. On what the, they call the ghost sign. Yeah, the ghost sign, yeah. And I think actually our building on that side has a ghost sign as well, mm. which I can't remember. It's quite ghosted though now. It's very yeah, ghosted, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Walcott but that is one of the cool things about Walcott actually is all the, I mean in Bath in general, yeah. is like all the different ghost signs. You get to see the history on the buildings. And mm. I mean, Bath is one of the most gorgeous cities. I mean, when Sam and I were like, Sam got a job in Bristol, there was yeah. a reason that we chose Bath. It yeah. wasn't just Same. that, well, and that you were here. <laughs> and I was like, Aww, I'm going to stop this shop and oh, wait, make no, myself. I just, <laughs> I just did the super millennial. You oh, know how, yes. You know how the yeah, zoomers yeah. are now doing yeah. it? Did they do it like that? Or do, I think they do it like that. No, they're right? doing like a half heart thing. Oh, really? Yeah, no, this is apparently, we're now old. Yeah, no, 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 this is old. <laughs> But apparently, like some re like Gen it's Alpha, like a, yeah, is doing like this for art. Yeah. Well, whereas we do this. <laughs> yeah. Which seems much less difficult. <laughs> it does seem much less difficult and very obvious. That is a heart. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we are old. With our maze balls and our hearts, <laughs> we're gonna keep up. <laughs> Or like OG Swifties. <laughs> yeah. Yes, also too, I figured out a way that we can be, um, so it's coming out on March 5th, right? 19th, I thought. No, this podcast. Oh, this podcast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, thought the yeah. album. <laughs> no, that's April 19th. Oh, um, yes, yes. So, March 5th. I need to like block that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you pre-ordered it, by the way? <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of how do I make this 13. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> So oh. March 5th, 5 and 3, that's 8. We need another 5. <laughs> Wait, March 5th, that's 3 and 8, that's our 13th episode. Yes, which is 4, four. plus... plus. There's two of us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, our battery's about to die, so I think we need to like wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so put your conspiracy theories in the comments. <laughs> yes. And thank you for, again, uh, listening to us ramble and spending time with us. Yes. Um, as much as uh, 
we uh or you guys seem to like listening to us we like making them and we are really excited about season three we are we have lots planned yeah. and um we can't wait to share that with you yeah. so thank you so much don't forget to like subscribe follow comment and share with us with your friends and uh, we'll see you in season three yeah see you then bye